All right, welcome to physics video 6.5. Uh, on the screen, as usual, are our objectives. Objective number one is that you should understand that power is the rate at which work is done. And objective number two is that you should be able to solve problems with the variables P, W, and T. So here we go. First of all, let's start with the definition of power. Power is the rate at which work is done. It is how quickly you do work. Um, to simplify it a little bit, it's how much uh, the energy changes or how much work is done per second or per unit time. Okay? Um, so to calculate it, all you do is you take, to find the power, you take the work and divide it by the amount of time it took to do that amount of work. All right? Probably the easiest way to do this would be to do an example. So here we go, example number one. Roy is going to lift a 20 kilogram box up three meters in four seconds, and we need to figure out how much power was used. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is get a good appreciation of what's happening. So as usual, I like to make a drawing. So here we go, little box, 20 kilograms is the mass of the box, and we are going to lift it up here to a height of three meters, it is still a 20 kilogram box, okay? So, um, because we're talking about energy changing, uh, we wanna be thinking about height and velocity. So we can think about GPE and KE. So we know the height at the top is three meters. So that means that we can assume that the height down at the bottom is zero. And then as usual, when we're lifting an object, we can assume that the velocity both begins at zero and ends at zero, okay? And the other thing we know is that this entire process takes four seconds. That's how long it took for Roy to lift it. Okay? Now, in order to calculate power, we need to know how much work Roy did and divide it by the time it took him. Clearly, the time is four seconds, but we got to find the work that was done. So one of the things that we've learned earlier in this chapter is that work, the work done by Roy, which is a non-conservative force, would just be how much the total energy changed. So I'm going to take TE final and subtract TE initial. Okay, so what I got to do is I got to figure out how much energy the box started with, how much energy the box ended with, and then subtract. So here we go. Since the height at the bottom is zero, that means that the GPE at the bottom is zero, right? Since the velocity at the bottom is zero, that means that the KE at the bottom is zero. And therefore, our total energy that our box has got before Roy lifted it is exactly zero joules, all right? Then he lifts it. So when he gets it up to here to a height of three meters, now it's gonna have some GPE, right? So we should somewhere off to the side calculate how much. So let's do it. GPE is mass times acceleration of gravity times height. So the mass of the box is 20 kilograms. Acceleration of gravity is 10 meters a second squared. And the height is three meters. Multiply it out and you will get 600 joules. So after Roy lifts the box, it's got 600 joules of gravitational potential energy. Since it's ending at rest, we can assume he, you know, sets it on a shelf or something. The KE is back down to zero. So the total energy that the box ends with is 600 joules. It changed because Roy did work. So let's figure out how much the total energy changed. So I'm going to go over here. TE final. Well, let's see. It ended up with 600 joules of energy. It began with zero joules of energy. And so the work that Roy did is 600 joules. So now what we want to do is find the power. So remember, power is just the work that Roy did divided by the time it took him. So he did 600 joules of work. That took him four seconds. Divide it out and you get 150 joules per second the rate at which work is done. Roy did 150 joules of work every second. All right? Another way of saying that is he gave the box 150 joules of energy every second. So for every second that he was lifting it, he did 150 joules of work. He gave it 150 joules of energy. Okay, so that's our power, 150 joules per second. Now, to add one extra teeny little hiccup into this, we don't use joules per second, we use watts. All right, so one watt, abbreviated with a capital letter W, is the same as one joule per second, okay? So our power here is actually 150, not joules per second, but 150 watts, okay? 
So be careful that a lot of times people get the W for work and the W for watts confused. Notice if it comes after the number, it's watts. Whereas if it was work, it would say W equals. Okay, so power P is measured in watts W. Work is measured in joules. All right, so there we go. There's the power. Roy gave the box 150 joules of energy every second. Uh, that's 150 watts worth of power. Okay. Now, you guys have all seen watts before. Watts show up on light bulbs. So let's do a light bulb example. Here we go. It's going to be awesome. How much energy does a 60-watt light bulb use if it's left on for 12 seconds? Well, let's start by writing down what we know. 60 watts. Well, that's a measure of power. So the power that our light bulb is using is 60 watts. It's going to be left on for 12 seconds. I'm going to figure out how much energy it uses, how much work is needed to power it, right? Remember, work and energy are both measured in joules, so we're looking for the work. Okay? So, if power is work divided by time, multiply both sides of that equation by t, and you get work is power times time. So here's all we're going to do. Well, let me do it up here. we got a little more room. Work is power times time. So our power was 60 watts times 12 seconds. All right, so you can do the math on this, and you're going to get 720, but 720 watts, okay? Um, that was watts, not watts. <laughs> All right, so let's figure it out. Well, remember, you guys, a watt is a joule per second. So this is really 60 joules per second that the light bulb is using for 12 seconds. The seconds cancel out, and you're going to be just left with joules. So 60 times 12 is 720. And you do, in fact, get joules. So that's how much energy our light bulb uses. 60 watt light bulb, if it's left on for 12, second, 12 seconds, will use 720 joules worth of energy. All right? Um, so the problems you're going to be solving are very similar to the ones we've been doing, you know, where we've been doing work. Um, the only difference is either I'll ask you to find the work, and then, then at the end I'll ask you to use that to find the power. Or at the beginning, I'll give you the power, and you'll use that to find the work. So, um, I guess that is it. So there you go, power in seven and a half seconds. Have a good one.